So hi there, I'm here today to do a review of the Bridge City HB12. Um, I'm not a professional YouTuber, so I apologize for the quality of this video. Um, but after getting this plane, I am really not impressed. It was a gift from a family member, and this thing cost a small fortune. Um, their retail is $1,100. You compare that to Lee Nielsen, which is considered high end, that's like, that's more than three times the cost of this five and a half. And it looks cool. Um, it looks great on my shelf up here, but that's where the awesomeness ends. So here's, um, the first thing I noticed when I took it out of the box is that the blade you can't really see it that well, but I'll put some pictures in here later. There's divots on the end, both sides. Oh, it's kind of shadowy. At the same spot. Came like that straight out of the box. For a thousand dollar plane, the blade shouldn't be ruined out of the box. In fact, this Lee Nielsen, I, I won't only, I got this about the same time and I've only spent like 20 seconds sharp putting a secondary and tertiary bevel on it. This thing, I spent about 25 minutes trying to um, get that out. I'm only using some water stones um, and I didn't want to get too aggressive because I was so, so excited to play with it, but I did put a basic secondary and tertiary bevel on the edge. You can kind of see the rainbowiness of their grinding pattern because um, it's actually kind of ground out inside, scooped out. But anyhow, let's get to the meat of this. This plane, first, well, let me compare this to the Wood River first. So I've been, do you hear that? Pretty smooth. It's actually really smooth. Here's the Lee Nelson. You're like, who does this? Why would you do this? That's super smooth. I mean, my finger. It's just a nice smooth surface. Lee Nelson's a little bit smoother than the Wood River. Oh, I need to zoom out. Huh. There we go. Um, but now look at this thing. There's scratches along this whole thing. It's basically, it appears to have been ground out with something like a hundred, 150 grit belt sander. Um, and the worst part is those grinding patterns um, have a deviation to them. They're not actually directly parallel with the plane. So um, you get the cross pattern, which creates friction. You also get this really interesting effect. Um, I'm gonna start up here. Ah, how do I, I literally got my phone taped to a bookend trying to create a stand for it. And eh, we'll start out here. So I'm just getting this flush with the end. Now if I push this, I'm just putting pressure on the back. Do you notice how it's drifting off to the side? It kind of lines up with the grinding patterns. Not kind of, it does. I push backwards. It comes back in. I've been able to repeat this just like a hundred times. And that's why I'm really frustrated. Now, normally you like your plane's, the plane's sole needs to be really smooth. That's why these are smooth. Do you hear that? That's like sandpaper. Now, if I just put a little bit of weight to kind of like if you were to hold it down, as you're trying to like flatten a piece of wood. Do you see like how jerky that is? I've actually learned that um, this plane surface has gotten scratched from doing this. I don't know how, none of these have, but, and I think my fingernail might have scratched it. 
It's not a very hard surface, at least not compared to those. Which, if this costs like a half as much as either of these, that makes sense. But this cost three times the Lee Nielsen and four times the Wood River. And if you're trying to push it down, remember that deviation? I want to try to correct it. It just gets caught. But you're like, okay, well, normally I might just grab a block of plane to help the um, wood help it. Um, so if you notice in here, uh, uh, you can actually see the previous wax patterns because the grooves, the wax gets caught in there. So you have to put on a lot more wax than normal. So let's just put a bunch of wax on. Um, run it down a couple of times. Now, it's, yeah, not a fan. Let's take the, um, um, Wood River, which, what is, yeah. So let's run it down a couple of times. Again, all the soles or blades are retracted because I'm just trying to compare the sole. I put my weight on it, but once you start moving, it picks up. I'm putting a ton of weight, way more than I did on that Bridge City. Let's take the Lee Nielsen. Lee Nielsen doesn't even have any wax right now, but I put all my weight on it. Okay, kind of does. It's also got a bigger surface area. But let's. I'm putting all my weight on this and then it's so smooth. Again, put a lot of weight on it. Nice and smooth. Action. Put it's just getting caught. And I noticed when I was trying to plane another board earlier flat when I was just trying to experiment with it. That jumpiness causes the blade to come off. So, or when you try to trick it. Um, so you don't get a very smooth cut. It's like two or three times the work. It's less reliable. Um, these all probably need their blades sharpened now. And since I'm not really trying to evaluate the blades right now, I'm not gonna go into that. But um, yeah, this thing, gosh. Wow, this is just, it's, it's a different beast. Um, I was told that originally that it might've just been a bad product. And then I got an email from their person in China a couple days ago after waiting two weeks for them to get some hands on some new ones and see if they could get me a better one and I was told by this guy from China named Baron that um, that's not a problem. I was also even told on that conversation that they roughen it up to help with the wax. I'm, I'm really confused as to why you would think a rough surface with, with wax is smoother than a smooth surface with wax because the wax actually just gets pushed from the surface of the plane and into the grooves. Um, so you need to use a lot more wax and it's never quite as good as a smooth plane um, surface. Um, the other thing I think I wanna show you, how can I do this, is this blade mechanism looks really neat. Like everything else, it looks cool. You lift it up and you can see the blade sitting in there and they use this dual sided blade but how do you pick that up i found this actually to be really kind of annoying this might be how it got divots is by the factory the person putting it in there did that um because i mean Yeah, 
it's just awkward and I mean that mirror finish is kind of cool um that's super cool but the blade was damaged out of the box and um here you can kind of see it profile ah Yeah, they kind of grind it out and you can, it's a little scooped out. Um, and yeah, and putting it back in here. It's just the most awkward experience. tighten that. It's got a Nora style adjuster right here. First I was wondering if it was plastic, but I think it might be metal. I'm not sure though. Um, the other thing, I can't tell if this, first I thought it might have been, I still probably think it is. Um, let me get move over to some more light. So there's was this kind of pasty wax on it or buffing compound maybe? I've kind of been wondering if they've Put the buffing compound and assemble it and forgot to um finish the surface of that sole um it was all over on the front and on the bottom so i don't i, I don't know if it was a rust preservative or buffing compound or what but yeah and yeah it's um I don't know. I was super excited about this. Um, I'm just a grad student who, who's found a huge hobby in playing with wood. So I basically <laughs> turned my apartment into a wood shop yeah, right next to the kitchen. Um, so um, I don't have big power tools. I just like to screw on with hand tools right now. So I'm still learning, um, but HP 12, it seems like it has so much potential. It's gorgeous. Um, but functionally, the sole of the plane sucks. They could have, all they had to do was finish the plane sole better. And we wouldn't have had these issues. And then that blade could have, it would have been nice not to have the dents in it. I mean, I suppose. I guess if you want to sharpen the blade regularly, it would have been nice to have this a little bit more convenient, but I mean, that's not a deal breaker, nor was this, the dents, but the sole of the plane, that is a deal breaker. Yeah, you can just see, let's run it down here. You can see that it doesn't go away. And maybe if I were to um, grind the surface or, um, sharp, not sharpen, smooth the surface, it'd probably be great, although it still seems like a soft metal. Um, I'm not sure how this happened, but, well, I do know how it happened. When I kind of did this, some, or something came, some thing came off and it just kind of scratched itself. But, yeah, so much hope. Um, I'm just making this video because um, there were only two others out there at the time that I got this, and they were by people who, in hindsight, probably weren't unbiased. Um, and when I originally saw all these issues, I was actually pretty got a call like five minutes after emailing from their tech support guy and he said oh yeah it's much probably just a bad batch it's not supposed to be like that and we'll get you a new one out there in a couple weeks um but 
that hasn't happened. And I got that other email from their head manufacturing guy in China telling me working as intended. And yeah, so just make an informed decision. If you want a thousand dollar piece of art on your wood shelf, it looks cool. But if you want to use it, um, yeah, consider something else. I wish something else had those depth skids. Um, anyhow, have a good day. Bye.